Welcome to the introduction video for Noria. A new era is looming on the horizon. The future of Noria is right in front of you. Guide your flourishing trade empire into prosperity. Discover flying islands, buy ships, and build factories. Invest in prestigious projects and secure their success by passing on secret knowledge to the politicians. For even above the clouds, there is still room for improvement. In this video, we will explain the setup and flow of a basic game of Noria using a four-player game as an example. Let's begin with the setup, so you are familiar with the game components. Put the game board onto the center of the table. Shuffle the islands face down and stack in a two, three, or four-player game five, six, or seven of the islands face down on the designated space on the game board. Place a set of four politicians on each of the six chambers in the town hall. Place one round marker on each space of the round track. Start with the topmost space and include the space that corresponds to the number of players. Place in a two, three, or four player game four, five, or six discs of each of the seven types on the market. Stack the obsidian, mycelium, and energy discs separated according to their type on the three spaces in the upper half of the market. Stack the city, journey, tool, and bonus discs in that order on the first, second, third, and fourth space in the lower half of the market. From the remaining discs, Every player takes one Obsidian, Mycelium, Energy, City, Journey, and Tool Disc. There are three types of resources, Obsidian, Mycelium, and Energy. Each of these resources matches one ship class for their transport. There are three warehouses for the three simple goods, Propeller, Sail, and Compass, and two for the complex goods, lamp, and piston. Sort these and the knowledge tokens next to the game board to form the common supply. Each player takes the five representatives and their color and places four of them into the cave. Place one of your four representatives on level one of a path of your choice. We will explain the four paths in a minute. The fifth representative is your ambassador. Place it on the small island. Each player takes one tableau and places the seven factories of their color on it. On one side of the tableau, you place one obsidian, mycelium, and energy ship. Each player takes one plastic base, one player aid, and a set of one large, one medium, and one small ring to build the action wheel. Take your six discs and place the city, journey, and tool disc in the highlighted spaces of your wheel. The remaining three discs are placed randomly on these three spaces. Make sure that the order of the obsidium, mycelium, and energy discs in these three spaces is different for every player. Place the discs always with their normal single colored side face up into your action wheel. Each player takes one knowledge and one resource of their choice. Randomly determine the start player and give them the smokestack. The starting player will not change during the game. Now, after completely setting up the game, one question remains. How do you win the game? The future of Noria is dependent on the progression of four great projects. The player who invests most efficiently into these projects and can influence the politicians to increase their value will be victorious. Each of the projects is represented by a path in the town hall. Every path consists of nine levels. Each level shows a number and a price. The price consists of either resources or goods. It determines if the same or different resources or goods must be paid for the investment. During the game, you'll move your representative from the cave onto the paths by paying the associated prices of the levels. You may only have one of your representatives on each path. There is one chamber assigned to each path. Two additional chambers do not have paths associated with them. The four top chambers are named after their paths. Refinement Chamber, Settlement Chamber, Exploration Chamber, 
and research chamber. The chambers without a path are called specialization chamber and division chamber. Each chamber consists of two sections. In the top section of each chamber, there are four politicians at the start of the game. In the bottom section, there are four light seats and one dark seat with different victory point values. You will pay knowledge to move one politician from the top section of a chamber onto the leftmost free light seat in the bottom section of that chamber. Afterwards, remove one politician from the top section of a chamber of your choice. To calculate the victory points of your representatives at the end of the game, multiply the number of the level on which your representative is standing with the victory point value of the associated chamber. The victory point value is the leftmost visible number in that chamber. In the same way, calculate additional victory points for your highest and your lowest representatives. The specialization chamber rewards your highest representative while the division chamber rewards your lowest one. Compare the numbers of the levels on which your representatives are. If you have more than one representative on the highest or lowest level, only one of them grants you victory points. Be careful! If one of your representatives is still in the cave, they are on level zero and do not score you any points. This also means you won't receive points from the division chamber. Sum up the victory points of your four representatives to calculate your end score. The player with the most victory points wins the game. Now that you know the goal of the game, we will explain the center of each of your turns. The action wheel. It consists of three rings with spaces in which you will place your discs. There are seven different types of discs, each of them able to trigger unique actions. A disc can be normal or upgraded. The player aid marks the active half of the three rings. On each of your turns, you'll activate zero to three discs in the order of your choosing. These discs must be located on the active half of your rings. Each disc must be located on a different ring. And the discs must be adjacent to each other. Use one action per activated disc. If one or more of your discs that you activate on your turn are upgraded, you can use two actions with exactly one of them. If the disc provides two action choices, you can use both choices once or one of them twice. You must use all actions of one disc before activating the next disc. On your turn, you can never have more than four actions. At the end of your turn, you rotate each of the three rings exactly one space in a clockwise direction. That way the discs move out of the active half of your wheel and into the inactive half, and vice versa. The different rings rotate at a different rate. The small ring rotates 180 degrees, the medium ring rotates 90 degrees, and the large ring rotates 60 degrees. Therefore, new combination possibilities will arise each turn. Let's talk about the game flow. The game for two, three, or four players lasts 16, 15, or 14 rounds. A round always starts with the start player followed by the next player in a clockwise direction and so on until every player has a turn. Afterwards, a new round starts with the same start player. Each turn consists of four phases, which are executed consecutively. The first phase is the influence phase. In that phase, you can change the positions of the discs in your action wheel. The second phase is the action phase, which is the main part of your turn. You can activate up to three discs in your action wheel and additionally trade on the black market. In the third phase, the politics phase, you can move and remove politicians. The last phase is the administration phase. In this phase, you rotate the three rings of your wheel, you receive knowledge, and you place the newly bought discs into your wheel. At the beginning of every round, the start player takes the bottommost round marker off of the round track and places it with the multiplier side up next to the game board. These multiplier tokens can be used if you should run out of resources in the common supply. 
If you have 10 resources of one type, return 9 of them to the common supply and place a multiplier token on the remaining resource to indicate that you have that resource 10 times. You can also use the multiplier tokens if the knowledge tokens are running out. As soon as the last round marker is taken off of the round track, each player has one last turn. After that, the game ends and you'll calculate your victory points. That was the introduction video for Noria. All of the action possibilities in the four phases of a round will be explained in another video. For now, we wish you have a lot of fun in the world of Noria.